Hi. <coughs> um, over the last couple of days, I've been asked by a user on YouTube, a viewer on YouTube, to uh, make some tutorials about Jashaka as like, basically an intro because on my channel I've got a bunch of tutorials about Jashaka, but I don't really explain different modules or any type of introduction to the actual software, which I suppose is a bit weird of me. Uh, the first thing I'd suggest is is Google Jashaka video tutorials on Vimeo and what you'll find is this gentleman here by the name of Daniel Avery and he's actually done a load of them so and they cover each different module now I'm gonna hope to do something similar to that his are really really good and he's really really good at explaining um, I think what the user I pointed the user in this direction though I think the users as you can see some of the video seems to have I don't know, gobbled up a bit, and so the user wasn't quite sure about some of the things that this gentleman was doing, simply because of the video was gobbled up. However, as I said, he's really good at explaining it, and in the ed the real, I should say, gem of this series is the editing module. The reason is because, believe it or not, back in the day, Chaka did actually have some documentation, and that told you how to do some of the editing stuff. So in some of my tutorials I say I press S to split. The reason I know that is because of this tutorial here because I remember he he took it from the original documentation that S is split and he's got a couple of different shortcuts. I can't remember them off the top of my head but yeah in the editing module uh, videos he's actually got a couple of different shortcuts which might come in handy while you're editing. Right so without further ado the first thing you need to do is you need to download your shaker. So if you don't know how to download your shaker uh, if you click here, this I'll try to put an annotation up here and it'll link you to my video or if you just search my videos there's actually a video on downloading Jashaka which points you in the right direction. Once you've done that, obviously you need to install it. Once you've installed it, if it doesn't work on your computer, what you need to do is right click, click on properties and then click on compatibility and then run this program in compatibility mode for service pack 2. I'm not sure if Mac has a similar thing going with it. Uh, I think it probably would be and therefore it would work. The only one that's probably even slightly dodgy is Linux and the reason is because Jashaka hasn't been updated for three, four years and I don't know if Linux does backward compatibility. I do think it does because I do have a laptop on which I tried Linux and uh, I did install, well, I attempted to install Jashaka and I think it did work. So it's one of them where... I can't really give you any guidance about the Linux one. You'd have to go to someone in the Linux community because they'll probably... But it, it is known to work on Linux. So, uh, but there you go. That's how you do it on Windows. And I'm guessing there's something similar on the Mac. Right, let's uh, open it up. So when you open it up, you are presented with this. This is basically called the desktop. So if you look to your left, on the bottom side, you've got desktop, animation, effects editing, paint and text. So these are all modules and each module has obviously its own function. You can also switch between the rather than using these buttons you can actually switch between the different modules but if you go to the top there's actually modules there and as you can see it has a few, a, a few more modules on there including the tracker, the player and the keyer and the colorize. I'll try to cover everything and just let you know what I know about it. So the first thing is the desktop. The desktop is kind of like where you're going to load everything and keep all your media files. So when you click on load, the first thing it does is it goes to the media folder inside the Jashaka program. Obviously you probably don't keep your media there. So if you click on C drive, go to users and then whatever your name is, my name is Hassan, and then go to desktop and this is where I keep my folder. So I've got it under interlaced, I've got lightsaber raw, click on load. Now the next time you go to load, it'll start from there. But if you shut down Jashaka and then turn it back on, it'll start again from the Jashaka, uh, Jashaka folder. The way to get around that is, for example, if I put everything in here, what I could do is, in here, I could click on uh, New Folder, if it works. Well, maybe it doesn't. As, as you may have noticed, Jashaka is quite a buggy program. But if I went in here, I right-clicked, I clicked on New Folder, and then I have to call it Media. I call that media, click on load, so I've got to use the, sorry, 
what I could do is I can go down to at the bottom here you can see that there's a bunch of buttons on the right hand side there's one that says preferences click on preferences here oh sorry just done something stupid here you can actually change your user storage so if you click on directory and you're interlaced find media click on OK oh sorry so directory interlaced because now inside the interlaced folder there's a media folder it'll accept that click on set path and it'll set your path to that so then whenever it opens it'll open in that file folder and you just put all your media into that folder pretty easy pretty simple uh, I'm not going to do that I'm bothered um, here on, in this section you can actually change a lot of global settings so obviously in, depending on the language you want to use uh, the resolution so you can use HD, you can use 2K, which is apparently film definition, and loads of different definitions. Uh, there's NTSC and there's PAL. While it looks quite impressive, it's not all that, to be honest. Uh, I use PAL because I've got a PAL camcorder, DV camcorder. I ain't that rich, unfortunately. So yeah, I use PAL. Uh, the reason I've got it on, had it on HD is because I was testing out some HD footage. But uh, I, I actually use PAL. If you're in America, you'll be using the NTSC. Okay, now once I've done that, uh, yeah, over here it says render settings. So you've got bitmap, JPEG, PNG, MLT. Now, I don't know what MLT is. JPEG, PNG, and BMP are all different types of picture format, obviously. I understand bitmap is the one with the least compression and therefore the highest file size. The reason I've set mine to that is because in a in a world of 500 gigabyte hard drives, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't think anyway. Uh, then there's this renderer which says GL renderer fast, which is the default. Qt GL renderer software and Qt renderer express. I actually don't know if there's any difference between three, and I have never tried. I've just kept it on GL renderer, and it seems to work for me. This web desktop thing, just ignore it because I'm. I think they wanted to make like a network of Jashaka or something, but uh, seeing development stopped, didn't really work. Under the user interface, oh, quick start. I've never actually clicked on any of these before, I have to be honest with you, but uh, it's one of them. Uh, I, I just ignore it, don't worry about it. On the left hand side is modify style, so you can actually click on grey, blue, black, white, and it will change the colour of Jashaka to suit whatever colour you want. I actually think this colour and this theme is actually quite nice as it is. So if we click on desktop we go back to our desktop view. Some of you may actually be looking at a screen like this. If that's the case, what you do is you just go over to your left hand side, you see these buttons, these little holes, and just drag across. And then all your media's develop there. You'll notice that for a, a, a different reason later on. So what I'm going to do is just to show some stuff, I'm actually going to go user, uh, let's say music attempt, let's, let's bring them all in. So I've brought in a load of stuff, but unfortunately it's actually piled in on top of each other. So how do I organise this? Well if I click on tidy down here, yes yeah, so I'll just need to tidy it up, it will tidy it up. You can then move it around as you want. So if I wanted all the audio over here, I could have all the audio over here. Then I could have, for example, my raw media over here and then stuff I've done afterwards over here, as you can see. To play this stuff, so if I want to play this, I could just click on play. And as you can see, it'll do the job. This was also play inside the desktop. So if you click on play underneath here, and then if you you can actually scrub through by left clicking and then going through. Uh, I'm guessing if you've got a faster, better computer, that's good. It's always going to be smoother playback. And the same thing over here in this section on the left hand side, you can play through there. And again, left click on the bar and you can scrub through. So fairly easy to use not too bad. Now there's two different views, there's this view which is the icon view and then there's like a details view. So on the right hand side you can see there's two buttons, the top button is for the icon view, the bottom button is kind of like for a details view, so you can use that. Uh, 
hope this was informative for you. Uh, I'll pick you up on a different video regarding a different module. Thank you.